Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Sammy Courtright on the line, and she is co-founder over at TenSpot. Sammy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Oh, Sammy. So what a relevant and timely topic. So managing flexible teams. Some people out there may be aware of what flexible teams are. Some aren't. Some have been uh, seeking them. I mean, we got, we're going we're gonna to uncover this topic and we're going to go deep on this one because uh, the world of work is shifting and uh, you're one of the experts in it. So I'm excited to get your, your input on that. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to break it all down today. All right, so let's uh, kick this show off the way that we, we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Sammy, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Sammy, what mission matters to you? Sure. So we at TenSpot are obsessed with building a product that makes everyone in the world love where they work. And we feel really strongly that the role that managers play has a big impact on the employee experience. That's why we're really focused on making managers the hero and enabling better people management so that people really do love where they work. And to kind of wrap up that thought, I think if the pandemic has really taught us anything, it's how important it is to enjoy and value our life. And for many of us, work is a really large part of our lives. And I think we've seen that sentiment through the great resignation, the great reshuffle where 4.5 million workers left the job force or changed jobs in November of last year. Now, many didn't just quit the workforce. Many workers are shifting to new industries or careers that offer higher wages, better benefits, or something that's more aligned with their values. I oh, love it. Love that word obsessed. Whenever I get an entrepreneur on the show that has something that they're obsessed with, uh, makes for a great interview, number one, but <laughs> I just feel like these are the innovators. These are the people that are not accepting the status quo. These are the ones that are really adding to that, to that, um, not just the workforce, but to what, how we all work going forward. So awesome stuff there. Um, let's just, and we'll go further, of course, into the workforce and flexible teams, but maybe let's, let's take a step back in your career a little bit. Like how did you get started as an entrepreneur and on that journey? Sure. So I would say that journey really began in my senior year of college. I went to Mm -hmm. university of Miami in Florida and my senior year, I started a jewelry company with three other founders that were based in Los Angeles. So Mm -hmm. on the weekends, I would be flying back and forth, helping with sales, distribution, PR, design, whatever it is that we had to do. We designed Mm -hmm. handcrafted artisanal jewelry. And after I graduated, I moved out to Los Angeles full-time, exited the jewelry company and began working at another startup called Never Rest. And this is really where the entrepreneurial uh, kind of flywheel effect began to happen. Never Rest was pairing personal trainers with clients in the Los Angeles area. And from that, I really started to learn more about how we were impacting people's personal lives, but they so desperately wanted health and wellness and these types of benefits in their work lives. And it was nearly being treated separately. So at Never Rest is where I met my co-founder, John, and we partnered up and began working on a company called FitSpot. FitSpot Mm -hmm. is actually 10Spot. Um, We pivoted during the pandemic, so we'll talk about that for Mm -hmm. sure. But FitSpot initially got started. We delivered robust and diverse employee Mm -hmm. wellness services on site to workplaces nationwide. And it was everything from yoga classes, acupuncture to professional development workshops, language classes, you Mm. kind of name it. We were really focused on on that employee experience. Mm. And that led me to 10Spot today. So taking a, let's say taking a step back here. So 
uh, obviously, you know, 10 spot is a, is a, um, you know, more mature company, you know, further along than let's just say the original jewelry business. I kind of want to stick in that, that sure. younger, just getting started realm for a little bit longer though. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's going to, there'll be some people that watch this, that they have an idea, like you, you're doing this when you're in college. That's not mm-hmm. easy. Like flying back and forth, doing all these other things. Like you know, let's just say, especially going into school in Miami, maybe some other people were doing some other things other than flying back and forth and starting a business. Right. So there's there's other people out there like you and like me who are out there that you know have these have these dreams. They want to be entrepreneurs. They want to do things, but maybe they feel that you know they don't they they just aren't able to get that idea off the ground, or they don't have that perfect idea or that other thing. I mean, what kind of advice would you give to those that are out there really just trying to start their first business or maybe their second one? The first one didn't go so well. What would you tell them? Sure, validate the need in the market. I I think one of the biggest learnings from all of my professional career, well, (laughs) short, I'm 32, but but still has been to to validate the problem that you're trying to solve, the company Mm -hmm. that you want to build with customers. I think sometimes there's this notion of, I have an idea in my head and therefore I'm going to start a business and it's going to be successful because it's an idea that's in my head. And that's fantastic. Many companies are super successful going about it that way, but- there really is a need to chat with customers, prospective mm-hmm. customers, chat with friends, family. Is this a problem that you're really facing? Is it a life or death problem? Is this a mm-hmm. nice to have or a must have? And there's no problem in either having a nice to have and having a must have. There's a need for both, but it's just more delineating specifically what is the value proposition mm-hmm. of the company that you want to build or that you want to start. And then the final piece of advice would be mm-hmm. go for it and go for it quickly. If you're yeah. thinking about it, if another company out there exists, that's that's great. That validates the market, but move and move really fast. Make quick decisions and um, yeah, keep pushing. Ah, uh, spoke, spoken like a true entrepreneur that's uh, that's seasoned, uh, regardless of age. Like the, I'm, I'm probably you know 20 businesses in, and I can think about some of my uh, younger years of starting businesses that I just thought were, oh, this is a good idea. Like, sure. and what I realized over time was that you know I was thinking more about sometimes my idea versus exactly what you said. Does the market need it? Like, who are going to be your clients? Who are going to be your customers? Like all these things, like if you plan those out, like not saying it's going to work, like nothing's guaranteed, right? But but maybe, um, maybe the road won't be quite as rocky or maybe you'll have, you know, a, a longer career with that particular business, right? Sure. It can only help, right? Awesome. So let's um, let's switch it up a bit. So okay. I do want to go into Ten Spot and um, and maybe let's go a little bit further into and we don't have to start at the pivot. Maybe go a little bit further back. So tell me a little bit more about the vision for the maybe the original company. Yeah. So well, originally we were we were Fit Spot, kind of yeah. entirely separate, really, from this business. The mm-hmm. you know mission and everything and the services that we delivered were quite different. But we really got started entering that employee wellness space. Mm -hmm. And it did give us incredible exposure to companies and really understanding what the employee experience was, which did Mm -hmm. really segue nicely into the time that we did decide to pivot and move to 10 spot because we had feedback data on Mm -hmm. what the employee experience was and then going through that pandemic Mm -hmm. and, and what that, how that changed from being in office to suddenly being remote. So FitSpot was a fantastic business. Um, the idea though, of delivering on-site services diminished very quickly in March Mm -hmm. of 2020. So we had two options. You either say this, we're going to fold up and and this is it, or we're going to transition our business and find out what people, what our customers need mm-hmm. today and and build for that. And that is the uh, option that we went with. So I want to stick maybe in that, um, in that time period of when you made that decision a little bit more, because there's people watching that r- this right now that will, that are either in the middle of making that decision or they'll have to make that decision coming up. And, you know, it, it's a, it's a tough one, right? Like, are we going to pivot? Are we going to change things? And I know this wasn't just a, uh, like you said, you had the data, like you knew what the work you were doing, you knew your market, you like, there's a lot behind what went into that decision. So it's not like you just said, oh, let's, let's change it up. No. There's more to it, so I don't want to oversimplify that. But I do know that either way, like that pivot or that decision to 
um, to change to really to be of more value because now you'll have the opportunity to help even more people based on going um, based off of um, off of helping employers and helping companies like you just expand what's possible in my opinion sure. um, but like take us back into what made that decision like how did that take place because I know it wasn't an easy one no, it was terrible. I yeah. like, I never want to relive, relive that experience again. No, but yeah. it was really valuable. You learn um, mm-hmm. a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about your team um, during yeah. really challenging moments like that. And to be honest, while we had data on our customers and their insights, the general mm-hmm. data about how the world was responding to that at that time, mm-hmm. it, we could only really base it on what was happening in Europe and Asia who had been hit first with the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So is everyone going fully remote or is there oh, going yeah, to be? That was fast at that time. I'm trying so to take myself fast. back into that time period and the, the audience as well. Like everything was changing really quickly. So we didn't quickly. know what was going to happen here. No idea. So we had to make, you know, a couple of assessments, right? Is mm-hmm. this something that's going to last three to six months, yeah. six to 12 months or longer. And that really, at least at our stage of our business, Mm -hmm. based on, you know, being a venture backed startup is that you're about capital preservation, right? During those types of times. So we established if we felt like it was going to be the three to six months, we could write it out. We could, we could figure this out and, you know, kind of press on moving forward, assuming that everything would go back to Mm -hmm. normal in that six month mark. About two weeks into thinking that that could be a plausible option, we just yeah. immediately, we were like, the world has fundamentally changed. Yeah. And if we don't change with it and at least offer a, a software, we're now a, a SaaS tool versus being, say, a service provider with the technology, we uh, we won't be able to make it and we won't be mm-hmm. able to provide value to our customers. So it was really that moment of, I remember we had an all-hands meeting. Yeah. My co-founder and I presented all of the data that we could possibly grab on Mm -hmm. people returning to work, what that experience would look like, when we feel it might happen, and the options that we had as a company. And at the end of the conversation, we were like, here's the deal. We can't force everyone in our business to march on down this Mm -hmm. road that we don't really know what the answer is, but we do know that we need to make a change. And the first step is making, you know, customer calls, prospective customer calls and understanding what's going on or don't. And that's perfectly fine. There's enough risk in this world. Why have more risk, you know, with, (laughs) with your, with your job at the moment. And honestly, everyone rolled their sleeves up. We had salespeople, engineers, everyone on the team (laughs) was calling customers, calling prospective customers. They were really bought into the idea of if we're going to transition this business, let's do it right. And let's play a role in it. What an amazing story. And and shout out to all the people that were on the phone, like right now, like that's amazing because for everybody to rally together, like your team must be amazing. (laughs) No, we had a lot of (laughs) you. It's, it's so fun, you know, having the conversations with uh, the product team would lead, like how to guide (laughs) customer interviews. You can't just straight up be like, what's the problem that you're facing and how can we solve (laughs) it? Like, which is sometimes the approach that many people want to take direct and to the point. You have to really get an idea of what they're facing, their day-to-day activities, how is mm-hmm. it? And of course, at times you're just like, I just want to know, like, are you facing these problems that we want to solve for? Answer that <laughs> specifically and you can't. So that was a lot of fun training um, people to be a little uh, less direct with what we thought we wanted to solve and yeah. open the conversation so we could naturally land on, you know, kind of what that thesis would be moving forward. And I bet you from doing this, I mean, just that process that you said. So let's just say like maybe that had to take place because of some of the external things that were happening in the world. But uh, I I feel like that process in general, regardless of the business like size or what they're doing, like it just sounds like it was a pretty healthy um, exercise overall to just to uncover and get closer to what your clients, you know, where you could be of value, right? Absolutely. I mean, look, would I sit here and say, let's do that again? It was very much like we were doing this for two weeks, everyone all hands on deck. It definitely should be a continuous conversation. Our product team internally still leads that. We have customer advisory boards and Mm -hmm. it just gives you such a good pulse. And the best part about it, I have to say, going back to that time was that people who traditionally would not be communicating with our customers or prospective Mm -hmm. customers, family, friends about these types of questions or issues we're having those conversations. And I thought that was pretty cool. You can see like, hey, this is this is what product does, you know, every day. What does it feel like? Do you like it? Isn't that interesting having these conversations and learning more? I think people really enjoyed stepping into 
other people's shoes. Yeah, I can see that. Um, let's go further down the line of this concept of flexible teams and what that looks like. Sure. I guess let's start pretty basic. I don't want to assume that, you know, if you, if somebody's never worked in a flexible team or in a flexible work environment, they may not know exactly what that means. So like, how would you define um, like flexible teams? It is what we are living today where you yeah. might have some of your teammates, colleagues working from home. Some working in the office, some working from a co-working space, hybrid. There's all of these different uh, paths that people are trying out and figuring out what works best for them. And that's really what's defining a flexible team where you're no longer in that one set location. You have the ability to work from, say, multiple locations. And how are you in, you know, effectively being still a cohesive team, even though there are people... Um, you know, kind of working from everywhere. Yeah. And so as this shifted, so you're, you're calling clients, you're getting a feel for what they need, and you obviously have your own technology, you have the great work that you were doing. And now you're thinking about this concept of flexible teams and like what the workforce will look like, not just now, but going forward like into the future. So as you started kind of uncovering this thought process of flexible thing, of flexible teams, like what are some of the gaps or the opportunity areas that you noticed were, were just like obvious? Sure. I think the, the thread of sentiment that we were mm-hmm. gathering throughout everyone's conversation was along the lines of how do we get people to feel like they work for the same company mm-hmm. when they're no longer in the same space? And yeah. that was just like, right. Duh. How do we do that? And I don't know about you, but that's hard, by the way, that's not an easy thing to do, especially because it's not like, okay, so mission matters. We've always been remote. We have people from London, uh, Philippines, Argentina, India, we're all over the place. So that's how we started though. But I can't imagine if I was working for this company where we all used to see each other every day and now we don't and to still feel that connection. Like, yeah, that would have thrown me off. Totally. So we kind of, through our conversations, and even today, we've really uncovered kind of five areas that we feel um, companies need to take advantage of or dive deeper into to really help. The word doesn't really solve that thread because there's many other factors that can solve it, but greatly contribute to the idea of people feeling like they're still part of something. And to your point, The first thing is connections, like social connections. Those water cooler conversations no longer exist. Now all you're doing is talking about work in every single Zoom meeting. Peer Mm -hmm. connections, remembering that you have more than just you on your team and beyond (laughs) your team, there's other teams in the the company that are also doing similar things or trying to march towards the same goal. So how are you communicating at work was really like number one in the connections. Number two was recognition, recognition and rewards. If an employee is recognized at work, they're 63% more likely to stay at that company for the next three to six months. And wow. we really feel that that has- 63, 63, 60, like let's not 63, glance over that. And that's just 63%. for recognition. Recognition, calling out. And look, it depends wow. how people like to receive the recognition. Is it a public shout out? Is it a private shout out? Is it a handwritten note? Is it a gift card? There are so many different mediums of mm-hmm. how people like to receive rewards and recognition. And- There are, thankfully, a ton of tools out there that allow you to do this, but it's got to be visible. People have to see it and people have Mm -hmm. to want to use it. So that's kind of always my tidbit of when people are asking about rewards and recognition. Mm -hmm. And then the last three, alignment. What are you guys marching towards? What Mm -hmm. is the company's mission? Do you know what you're working for and how your work Mm -hmm. contributes to, to kind of reaching that goal or mission? I think a lot of things kind of got lost in the sauce in the pandemic and people mm-hmm. were really using that opportunity in Q4 of last year, as we saw to be like, wait a minute, what am I doing? <laughs> what does my company do? What yeah. role do I play here? Am I certain that this aligns with my values? Am I certain that I'm still connected to the company's mission and an ability to make that really visible and reiterate it so mm-hmm. that people remember why they joined in the first place is super important. Is, excuse me, super important. So the last couple ones, learning and development, upskilling, the ability to educate each other and one another, whether it be I learn from you, you mm-hmm. teach me something or that we do a LinkedIn learning or a masterclass, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. the opportunity to learn is super important at work. Mm-hmm. And then finally, performance. How are you doing at your job? 
Is that feedback loop happening consistently in a regular cadence? And is it easy for you to understand what's being communicated to you and how can you put that into action? Those are really the five areas that we've recognized through a lot of this research. Companies need the most and specifically managers Mm -hmm. need the most support. And so these five areas, it would seem like maybe companies have maybe out of those five, like, you know, maybe they have one thing they're doing well, maybe it's the recognition thing, maybe it's the alignment side, like there's all these different things, but I feel like it seems like any one of these um, opportunity areas can be complemented through this. Is that right? Yeah. And we've noticed in particular a real opportunity in the connections one. We've really Mm -hmm. found that social connections at work is really threaded through the other four you know, areas of, of development or improvement. And when people feel really connected to each other mm-hmm. and connected to their managers, connected to their teams, it, it all seems to click into mm-hmm. place. And so we're really focusing on the connection side and how we can really help foster those social connections at work and, and peer mentors and peer connections. I think this is a great um, a great transition. So I want to go mm-hmm. further into 10 spots. So I know you've told us a little bit about it and obviously you told us the, the story of the pivot and your amazing team over there, um, but let's yeah. go further. So tell us specifically about the company as it stands now. Sure. So 10 spot, we are an employee relationship management platform, mm-hmm. an ERM. We've all heard about CRMs, you know, yeah. like Salesforce. We're an ERM, an employee relationship management platform Mm -hmm. that provides managers with the insights and automation needed Mm -hmm. to effectively manage flexible teams. For some of those that have not used ERMs in the past, like mm -hmm. I I feel like the concept of CRMs took quite a bit of time for many companies to adopt, right? At one point, we all had um, spreadsheets, let's say, whether it's Google Sheets, spreadsheets, Excel, and and for anybody that's out there still managing everything on spreadsheets, I'm not downing you. We're just, it took us a couple of years to get into it too, but but upgrade to that CRM one day, you won't (laughs) won't be disappointed one day. And and Salesforce does not pay me. So whoever you want to upgrade, upgrade one. But but now um, looking at the idea of an ERM, maybe Mm -hmm. just the benefits of it overall. Let's start there. Sure. So the concept that we're taking from the CRM is that all of your data is stored in one place. People use the HubSpots and the Salesforce because all of their insights are stored in one place. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at the ERM in exactly the same way, where information on your employees is all centralized in one location. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're like, oh, but what about all of those HR platforms? Yeah, sure. It's great to get birthdays, work start dates, but I'm also talking about other insights about your employees. Mm -hmm. How do they prefer to communicate? Are they a you know morning person or a night person? Do they prefer mm-hmm. Slack, email, Teams, phone calls? How do they like to receive feedback? These nuances that are so yeah. important to really understand how your team operates, that's stored and collected from 10Spot in our mm-hmm. ERM. And we feed that information to managers in a daily cadence so that they mm-hmm. can get alerts of how their team is feeling, whose milestones are coming up or a shout out like XYZ just closed a deal, send a message. Their preferred method of communication is phone calls. Here's their phone Mm. number. It's it's just prompting them to be that really proactive manager based on all the data that's in the ERM. And to me, um, when you think about the workforce maybe being a little bit more fluid than it once was, so like most people aren't going to start, whether they're management or otherwise, they're not necessarily going to be there for 30 years, retire with the gold watch, right? Like a lot has changed. So it seems to me like this ERM and just this concept overall just becomes the what really the, the backbone behind like employee management. And so that whether it's another management manager taking uh, taking over for another team or whether it's a new employee, just kind of getting getting like a, a lay of the land and getting used to and onboarded to the company. It seems to me like that ERM thought process is going to be what allows a company to grow with the um, least amount of, let's just say, friction on some of these things that are really important, like you just mentioned, over and above the birthday, okay? You can do a birthday, that's straightforward, but that level of like, should I should I give them recognition publicly? Should I not give them recognition publicly? Should I you know, do a phone call? Like what you're just talking about, like to me, that's just next level. And it just, it's just obvious and it makes sense. Yeah, 
And we've really recognized that employees today want the employee experience to be intentional. And I think that companies that are not retaining employees today Mm -hmm. are facing that issue with intentionality. How Mm -hmm. can they bring that to the work that they're doing, to how they're communicating with each other? And we've really found that a lot of the tools that um, Mm -hmm. we use at 10Spot have have brought that sense of intention and Mm -hmm. um, thoughtfulness to the work that we do. What type of employers or employee um, have you found get the most value out of working for 10 spot? Is this a, is this a solution like only for enterprise? Is it for middle market? Like give me a feel for who it, who is, um, who it's possible for it to use or who's, who can use it. Sure. We advise that you manage at least five individuals. So that could be like the, the very much like the lower yeah. end of it, but success wise, medium to large size companies. We work across all industries, but a lot of our customers are tech and media. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so, so you're not forgetting the small businesses. I always love when I, cause you hear all these things, people get excited and they're like, ah, oh, wait a minute, I'm a small business owner. Is this okay? So it's totally appropriate for the small business owner then, right? A hundred percent. And then think about also the businesses that might need it the most. Yeah. Law firms, doctor's yeah. offices, places that notoriously had people on site. Yeah. And now that's been completely disrupted. It's like, whoa, how do we even, there hasn't even been a thought of how to effectively manage, mm. you know, distributed teams. So it's been really beneficial of like, whoa, whoa, whoa let's recenter, recalibrate mm. and be a little bit more intentional with the employee experience. And then on the other end of the spectrum, the middle market companies, the enterprise, like it's obviously appropriate for them as well, right? Yeah, hundred percent. We have people from the CEO down to yeah. uh, line managers utilizing Ten Spot mm-hmm. because it kind of can level up. The CEO can understand what tasks they need to do, so they could shout out someone that's um, you know on a team that they might not interact with regularly, and to get a note from you know, the CEO of the company about, Hey, you closed this deal or, Hey, I saw that you worked really hard to renew that customer. That is powerful and impactful. So yes, um, companies of those sizes can also work with us. Oh man, that is, that is so powerful. It's awesome. What type of, um, tell me, tell me a little bit more about the user experience. Um, so let's say uh, somebody's looking at getting onboarded. They're thinking about, Oh, you know, I, I have the right amount of employees. You've been thinking about this. Like, how does that, how does that onboarding process work? Sure. So you're a manager. Yeah. You log in to our website and you immediately see your manager's dashboard, if you will, mm-hmm. where you get insights on sentiment, insights on engagement, connections, mm-hmm. and then followed by a series of suggestions that you should take or can mm-hmm. take to better effectively manage your team. So it's nearly, I don't want to say a checklist per se, because there yeah. is a tangible like whys behind each one of the tasks that are presented. It's like, one should do this because this is the impact of it. Yeah. You know, you should take this action. We've already done it for you. We really try to automate a lot of the legwork. So it's less of like, oh, I hear, I feel like I have this laundry list of stuff to do. Right. As we get smarter and smarter, once we start working with your company, our technology starts learning and understanding how you like to write the mm. sentiment happening in your team. And we can help, you know, kind of automate a lot of that communication on your behalf. So yeah. that's really the employer experience, having that dashboard with all of the data that you need alongside with suggestions of what actions to take based on the daily pulse. Hmm. And from the employee side of things, like how do they, how do they interact? Sure. So we also integrate with uh, collaboration tools like Slack or MS Teams because we like to go right to the source of where employees are operating. And we start off just by asking, we call it the user guide moment where we we start asking questions like I mentioned earlier, you know, like, hey, what time of day do you prefer to work? And it's usually, you know, one question a day, something a little bit fun. You get like a, you know, fun image after completing it. We try to keep it really lighthearted so that mm-hmm. we can start analyzing the type of information and storing that in the ERM to then feed to the manager. So we start by asking questions. We have challenges on our platform. You could do a mm-hmm. challenge across anything from a fitness challenge through to like a 
water drinking, or we have a Super Bowl challenge, of course, which has been wildly yeah. popular at the moment. And we also have a ton of content available on our platform. We host uh, about 25 live sessions per week, team building sessions for wow. employees, where they can join these sessions with their teams and watch it together. And it can be anything from sommelier covering a wine drinking class through to uh, how to be the most um, effective remote leader in the work place. We hold seminars, mm -hmm. webinars, workshops on all of that. And content's five minutes long to, you know, 30 minutes long. It really depends what you're looking for. So we do that all for the employees as well. Oh, that's awesome. So you're, um, so number one, I, I like that you said it's fun. It's engaging. It's not an extra tool. It's a little, you know, just a quick thing and you're, yeah. you're getting data. So it's not like the employee has to, it's another thing they have to do. It sounds to me like it's something that over time they just want to do. Like they want their interactive graphic. They want to see what the next event is. Like, like, I feel like that is a big key to what makes something like this work overall. Yeah, we don't want it to feel like it's a, yet another tool. We don't want it to feel like it's work or that we're asking too personal information. Mm -hmm. It's it's really about how can we make your manager most effective so that you can be, you know, fantastically managed and really feel like you're having an impact in the workplace. So, and plus all the stuff that they're doing, if they're engaging in particular types of content or connecting with people, shouting out people on our mm -hmm. platform, that's all just fuel. You'll be like, wow, you've got a cultural leader. Sammy, yeah. she's shouting out people, giving a ton of reactions. Acknowledge that behavior, encourage that behavior. That's, you know, the type of individual you want to have on your team. So we're really using the whole scope of our platform mm -hmm. to, to analyze and collect this information to then make better suggestions. Yeah, that's great. And then the other thought process is, um, or the other part that you mentioned about having uh, having these events and these things that that um, the employees can tune in with the whole team, the team leader, everybody can be on yeah. it five minutes to 30 minutes. So now you're also creating uh, content that's unique, it's different, it's engaging, and you're taking a little bit of that burden off of the uh, off of the maybe the team lead as well, so that they don't have to always think of what is the next new creative idea, like you're taking some of that off their plate too, right? Oh, absolutely. We've all been there where it's yeah. like, oh, great. I've got to, you know, schedule another team event. What could what I possibly I do, right? put together? What do I do? We it's, did this one last time. Totally. A lot of ideas. Like what's next? So we have all of those available pre-recorded or live. So you can pull them up from the library and do a cocktail crafting class to, yeah. you know, Spanish 101. It really depends what you're interested in. But mm -hmm. yeah, the idea is to make, because we really feel that to your point, connections, as I was mentioning earlier, really happen in those types of non-work related kind of events and, mm -hmm. and moments throughout someone's workday. So having that just available on the platform, it's one of the many tools that we have for managers that they can just say, plug and play, 2.30 PM guys, we're going to do a five minute meditation. Yeah. Everyone join the Zoom. Oh man, that sounds good. I want a five minute meditation too. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, so, well, Sammy, I have to say, like, this has been great learning more about yourself um, and, and your journey as an entrepreneur, all the way from uh, from the beginnings in Miami, all the way to to now with Ten Spot, the pivot, the transition, adding more value to the marketplace, like finding ways to help employers and help the world manage and cope with some of the things that are going. I mean, I think it's just a wonderful story. So I know, I know you, you're growing, business is changing, um, but I do have to ask. So, so what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for 10 spot? Sure. So we've recognized very mm -hmm. clearly and quickly that managers can't be everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when they're managing flexible teams. It's impossible to think that previously when we were in an office and you yeah. had everyone around you, you were able to get a pulse really quickly on how mm -hmm. people were feeling, attitudes, behaviors, and sentiment. That's pretty much disappeared. So we're doing something really interesting with text analysis and sentiment analysis. We're better mm -hmm. understanding how people are communicating with one another and mm -hmm. how those insights, language used, tone used, can help inform the sentiment of employees and mm -hmm. give that information to managers. In um, obviously, we have we will be invited to said channels, and you were invited to you know to understand the text that's yeah. happening in specific locations, and um, feed that back to managers. So there's really, how can you be everywhere at once um, in a, to, to best effectively lead your team is really the focus of, of 10 spots future. And me personally, I want to spend more time with my family. I have not seen my family much um, since the, I actually have not seen them since the pandemic. So I'm really looking forward to um, spending more time with my family. 
Oh, that's great. Uh, me too on that one. I'm looking forward to it as well. My mom, every time I talk to her, when are you coming over here? I'm like, I'm going, mom, I'm going, come on. You got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> I'm going. It's not, not too far from uh, California to Florida. I will make it. I'm oh, in. that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> My parents are in Australia, so it's a little bit further. Oh, I, the... oh she's going to see this and be like, Sammy's going to see her parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're really? like, sorry. Okay. <laughs> But Florida's oh. Florida's an awesome time. This time of year. <laughs> well, Sammy, again, it has been wonderful having you on the show today. If somebody is watching this and they want to learn more about 10 Spot or to connect with you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? Sure. Well, first and foremost, we have a website, 10spot.com, and that's T-E-N spot.com. LinkedIn, Sammy Courtright. Slide in my DMs. I would love to have a conversation. Or you can send me an email, sammy at 10spot.com. Fantastic. And and to the audience, we'll put all of those, uh, all that information in the show notes so that you can just click on the links and head right on over and connect with uh, Sammy and her team. And uh, if this is your first time watching Mission Matters or, or experiencing our platform, we're all about bringing on entrepreneurs, executives, and experts, and really having them share like what motivates them, like what gets them up and going every morning and going out of the marketplace and trying to trying to make a difference. If that's uh, the kind of content you're into, we definitely invite you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming on and we don't want you to miss a thing. And uh, Sammy, again, really, it has been a pleasure. Thanks again for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me.